McGraw Hill, people like Wiley Publishing are coming to college campuses today to talk to to uh, professors and academics. They came to our campus recently, in fact, about six or eight of these publishers. They don't they haven't figured it out yet how they're gonna best make money. Because there's gonna be middle middlemen in between kind of kind of cutting out their profit sharing. Uh, already, you know, there's Book Surge and Lulu and Author House where you can self publish your work, you know. Uh, what hap what one company that you should look at as an example of what's coming is Flat World Knowledge. What Flat World Knowledge does is they offer books, textbooks as wikis, free to the world. They sell ancillary content wrapped around it. Okay? So they're selling study guides, and 60 to 70 percent of students who buy, who buy, who, who obtain the free book, buy the extra materials. So they're, they're making money by the wraparounds. The same with Chinese Pod and, and Live Mocha. They sell premium services wrapped around. It's called freemium model. You sell something free, and you have premium things wrapped around it. And that's that's where we've been headed for a long time. There's a new book called Free from the editor of Wired Magazine. Chris Anderson is the editor. He talks about 10 different models of what free means. And so if you're, and he actually gives away his book. There's an audio book of the world book free. You can all get, unabridged. He sells the abridged version because he figures people are busy and they'll want to get the abridged. So he gives away the full books. So if you like to listen to the whole thing, the, the book free. He has another book called The Long Tail, which explains how the music industry has kind of died out. So I recommend a couple things. Look at Flat World Knowledge, get the book free, and you'll start getting a sense of maybe where we're headed. Or maybe read my predictions. All right, I'm happy to send you the last chapter. If anyone sends me an email at kurt at worldisopen.com, um, I'm happy to send you a chapter or so out of the book or out of the free book that's still to be posted. Other questions? Uh, maybe I should go over here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you mentioned um, you know people getting a little concerned about like, Google controlling all knowledge or things like that. Um, with the advent of cloud computing and a lot of like outsourcing to places like Google and Amazon and Microsoft and the growth of these yeah. these big groups and the movement away from like localization, um, how do you see that affecting openness and sharing? The, the movement towards more local communities creating stuff, content like Ning groups, like the million groups that exist in Ning just on, on specific topics of interest. How does that move us away from big conglomerates like IBM, mm -hmm. is that your question? Yeah. And, uh, and some centralized structures and hierarchies of some kind. Um, if you look in the past six months, the big announcements in many ways, as I was saying this morning, have not come from the Googles of the world. They have their share. It's again, as I mentioned early on, it's these individuals creating a free grain of rice website, or Jimmy Wales creating Wikipedia with Larry Sanger, two guys. Larry Sanger, by the way, no longer works for Wikipedia after coming up with the, the title. But it's individual, individuals are out here creating the stuff. The, and um, is that the future of where things are going? Is it small local groups? Is it small groups deciding on what's accredited? Uh, are our college courses going to be accredited by the small, you know, locally created I don't know. I, I really don't have an answer about local versus global. I think things, to me, personally, things are becoming more personalized as opposed to local or global in that my peer group is, is my network that I create. It's not necessarily, a, by local, it might, might be smaller in nature, but more niche, niche related. And you see that in Ning. Now, Ning was created by Mark Andreessen who brought us Netscape. If you've been to Netscape 15 years ago, you know it's Ning, and there's over a million groups in Ning. But there's Ning for educators, Ning for college instructors, Ning for classroom 2.0. So if you're into education, you can join these different Ning groups. Um, so that's an indicator. That, and Facebook groups. You look at Facebook groups and fans of pages. That's an indication of. But these Facebook pages, as he pointed out this morning, Mohammed said there's hundreds of thousands of people. It's not local. They're small. That's a pretty. That's bigger than Google. So. It's hard to answer that question, but I think it's more personalized. We're going to move to personalized learning environments, not necessarily local learning environments, but I think more personalized. So, is that question? Okay, we probably should call, I, I probably should end this, so maybe unless there's one dying question. Rachel, you had a question, we can answer at lunch, maybe you can join us for lunch. Um, I want to thank everyone for letting me speak on this campus, not only let me speak, but filling the room, and let me speak longer than I was scheduled. So, thank you for giving me this opportunity to be on this. And Kurt just sent me an email, Kurt at World is Open, or meet me downtown tonight at the pubs. We'll be downtown doing something. So, uh, 